Hi guys! Today I am back and I am actually going to be doing a eyeshadow palette tour. I saw a couple of other YouTubers like Sarah Rose doing this and I thought that it was a good idea. I have no clue who started this. Frankly, it's kind of an inventory but just focused on eyeshadow palettes so I don't know if there's any specific creator that I need to um, credit but I hope you guys enjoy. I just felt like filming and I kind of wanted to pull out all of my palettes since I've been doing my palette spotlight series which I will link that playlist down below and since I have been rotating through some of my palettes that I haven't touched in kind of a long time um, I thought it would be fun to pull them all out and then if there's a palette that you want me to spotlight in my palette spotlight series you can leave it down below and I will get right to it. So I'm going to start with the palettes that I have, like a couple of the same brand, and then I'll move into the rest of them because I only have a couple, I only have like two or three brands where it's like I have multiple palettes. And the first one is Tarte. So I have four Tarte palettes. I have two of their holiday collections. So this is from 2017 um, and it's got a few face products and I believe... 5x5, five five, yeah, 25 eyeshadows. Um, I honestly have not touched this in quite a while. I have considered panning it um, or just like really focusing on it in a project pan and seeing how that goes. Um, but I just, I haven't had like the guts to commit to it just because it's so big and I've had a hard time panning eyeshadows in the past, but maybe someday in the future. And then I also have their holiday collection from the following year, 2018, which was their like pineapple themed collection, which again has um, cheek products and 25 eyeshadows. It is interesting. The color stories are quite different and you would think that like year after year they would all start looking the same. But I do think Tarte does a good job of like picking kind of unique themes and then going with it. And then the next two palettes are some of my most used palettes in in, every, in my entire collection. I have my Tarte Tartlet in Bloom palette, which was featured in my 2022 Panthos eyeshadow palettes series, and it has seven pans in it, so this is definitely a contender for a future Pan That palette, and it is one of my favorite palettes in my collection. Honestly, it if it weren't for sentimental reasons, it would be my favorite palette, I think. I'm just not sure. It's so good though. Every time I use it, I'm like, oh, this is a dream to work with. Like, just oh, one of my favorites. And then I also have this Tarte Tartist Pro to Go palette. As you can see, this is also very well loved and it's because it was my Pan That palette in 2021. I really wish I had used this up and half of me really wants to like roll it in this year and like use it in conjunction with my current Pan That palette and I honestly might like there's a good chance that you will see me finish this palette off in the next in the next two years I would say if it's not this year maybe next year while I'm mentioning pan that palettes I am going to quickly detour and talk about my Smashbox cover shop mat I am not going to show the inside of this because frankly I don't know when this video is going up and I am panning it this year so I will link my pan that palette series for this and this down below so that you can get all caught up if you like pan that palette videos but this is the palette that I am using this year it's all matte quite simple check out my project if you would like to see all the shades and get to know more about it then the other company that I have multiple palettes by is MAC and that's because they're also little. <laughs> um, I have my two Patrick Star times MAC holiday collection. Um, it was like a collaboration for he did he did like a year-long collaboration and released four collections with them I believe and this was released in like December of 2017. Um, they're beautiful. This is what I use today. Um, a palette spotlight should already be up for these guys. It is, they are so beautiful. Um, I really think that Mac, uh, Mac and Patrick Star did a beautiful job with the quality of these. It's a couple shades that already existed and then a couple shades that he came up with and they're, they're really good palettes. Then a palette that I have panned before I ever started YouTube, my MAC Amber Times 9 palette. I have already featured this in a palette spotlight, so you can check there to see what look I came up with. But I have two little pans, and I 
do really like this palette. Very good basic palette. This is a palette um, Dusky Rose times nine. It does have a pan in it, but that is because I inherited this from my mom and she really liked that middle shade and didn't really like the rest of the shades. So she gave it to me and that is why I have one gigantic pan in this palette, even though I really haven't used it very much. I have this Plum Luxe um, Shadow Stripes. I'm not gonna lie, I have not used these very much, but every once in a while when I want something like super like bright purple sparkle everything, yes, this is what I reach for. So it does have a time and a place. And then I also have the Solar Glow Times 9 palette, which also does not have much use, but it is quite pretty. I also, I'm gonna include this in the MAC section. I have a Z palette that has a couple um, MAC shadows in them. It's these three, it's Wedge, um, Gleam, and Tempting. And then the rest of the stuff in here is things that I like ripped out of like holiday collections and these are like some Too Faced shadows at, from like holiday 2015 or something bananas like that so that's why I'm including it with the MAC. Those are the only shadows that I really use out of that palette but I would be also interested in focusing on that and getting some more use out of those shadows. Then moving into Anastasia Beverly Hills I have the Soft Glam and the Sultry Palette. Both of these are quite beautiful if you aren't familiar with them but it's hard to be watching makeup YouTube and not be familiar with these palettes. Um, they're both very different but I truly love them both and I'm very glad I don't these are palettes that I would not have purchased for myself and they were a gift or they were both gifts from different family members and frankly I I've never been more wrong I wouldn't have purchased them but using them kind of makes me want to purchase other ABH palettes if a color story really spoke to me and then two other very well used palettes are my Huda Beauty palettes I have the new nude which has three pans in it and then I have the rose gold remastered palette which has two pans right here it's hard to see this pan because the whole shadow is so shiny um these are really beautiful palettes these I would say are some of my favorite palettes in my collection they're some of my more reached for palettes in my collection um I have considered panning them before but they are such specific color stories I do have a hard time using them consistently like every single day for more than two or three months before I start feeling a little bit burnt out with the color story. But I, that doesn't mean I don't love them. They're just, I like a little bit more variety. Then those are all of the palettes that I have like multiple of. Um, I'm gonna get through my bigger palettes and then I'll move into my quad, the rest of my like quads and duos and smaller palettes. You all know the Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals palette. If I could only keep one palette in my collection, it would be this one. It is beautiful. It has so many wonderful textures and colors. Rest in peace, Tati Beauty. Um, I am really sad, especially after seeing those that imagery that she had for the, the next palette that was going to come out. When I bought this palette, I knew, I'm like, I will buy whatever other palettes come out in this range. And then this will ever... This ended up being the only one so I will I will definitely just cherish this palette for as long as it is good in my collection and I adore it I adore every look that I come up with from it a palette that was recently featured on my palette spotlight series is this Laura Mercier eye art artist palette it is purpley tones this was another gift from my mom um, I honestly have not used it a ton but I was so happy with how my look came out the other day that I am very tempted to reach into it more and maybe focus on it for a month or two during 2023 as my companion palette to my Pan That palette. And then I have the Naked Urban Decay Cherry palette. This is not one of my favorite palettes in my collection, but there's just a part of me that like can't let it go. I don't know why. It's because I really love like three or four of the shades. If I had a friend who was like, ooh, I love that color story, I would totally give it to them, but I just can't find it in my heart to throw it away because I don't hate it the same way I hated that like Cargo Cosmetics one. I had very strong opinions about that one. If you missed my declutter, I rant about it for, I think I cut out some of the rant in editing, but I do rant about it for a hot minute. 
this one is just it's just meh it's just meh that's my hot take I never look at that palette and go "Ooh, I want to use that and then when I do my makeup with it I'm like okay and then I like reach for something else the next time Next, I have this Flower Beauty Shimmer and Shade Eyeshadow Palette in Cool Natural. This I hold on to because the shimmers are truly very beautiful, and these shadows are so soft and blendable. This may genuinely be my only drugstore eyeshadow in all of this, which saying that out loud sounds bananas, but um, eyeshadow palettes just, there's something that I tend to like lust for in a way that I don't lust for like bronzer or concealer and so I tend to look towards higher end palettes something that I like save my money for rather than like a concealer like a five dollar elf concealer can get the job done so that's kind of why this is my only drugstore palette but it is quite pretty I do enjoy it and I would be open to focusing on it, maybe trying to hit a couple of pans in it, um, but it's just never really jumped out at me as like a clear pan that palette option. Then I have this NARS limited edition ignited palette. I think it was from holiday. No, it was from like spring 2019 or spring 2020. I want to say it was like a like spring or summer collection. It is beautiful. Frankly, these mattes, they're a matte shadow. Don't care. These shimmers, though, are just, they are completely unique to anything that else that I have in my collection. There are very few shades where I'm like, this is completely unlike anything else I have in my collection. And, the, and these come from this palette, my Huda Beauty New Nude palette, and my Tati Beauty palette because it has those like sequin shades and the glitters and I don't have any other glitters in my collection those are the only three where I'm like this is truly unique and these like dry glittery flaky beautiful multi-chromes are so stunning and I will hold on to this palette forever because even though I don't reach for it a ton every time I dip into one of those shades I'm just like yes 10 out of 10. We're going to take a bougie moment and we're going to talk about my Natasha Denona Mini Star Palette. Um, I really like this palette. This has also been featured on my Palette Spotlight series and I really like it. Um, I like every single shade in here. I think that this is a really well curated five pan palette. I don't feel the need to reach for anything else when I'm playing with it. And honestly, that is my only requirement of a tiny palette like this. That it is all encompassing. And then my other bougie um, palette is my Dior Backstage Eye Palette in the shade Rosewood Neutrals. And this has gotten featured a lot on my channel because I received it very recently. It was a gift last August for completing my internship program from my mom, which was very sweet of her. And since I got it when I was very inspired and excited to like focus on my channel and create new content, I was like, I'll do a first impression and then I traveled with it and I worked and I used this palette like exclusively for like a month and I was like now I want to like go back and update my opinion so I have talked about this almost too much um I do really like it but it is a very specific color story kind of similar to Huda New Nude so I don't know if I would ever pan this dedicatedly I might kind of just focus on it for a couple of months and then shift direction when I feel like it A palette that I forget how much I love until I reach into it is the Malibu Free Spirit Palette from Lorac. I got rid of my Lorac Pro Original Palette because it was too old, the formula had changed, it just, I needed to let it go. And so I let go of it at the end of 2022 after it was in my Pan Those Eyeshadow Palette series. And this is a full face in six pans. I This is can be used as a bronzer. I have a blush. I have two shades that work as highlight. F like all of these shades work as eyeshadow. It is truly a full face and a palette. And I think that in my new work, I might be, tr uh, well, I know I will be traveling a bit more than I do now. And 
I've toyed around with the idea of just having a makeup bag that just sits packed. It has everything that I need for a full face, like a really quick and easy full face. And then I just like don't touch it. I don't unpack and pack and unpack and pack because I tend to be quite forgetful and I have a hard time. I always forget like brow product or mascara or whatever it is. And this would be a contender for what to put in that bag because it has bronzer, blush, eyeshadow, highlight, everything. It's very neutral, very pretty, and just like all around kind of perfect. Then I have this mini itty bitty baby palette from Lancome. It's the color design palette in taupe, um, taupe craze. And so it's itty bitty bitty. It's like a smaller version of one of their little like quintets. Um, I think this is fun. I have considered painting it just because it's so little. Like it would take like so little time to use this up completely and that would be really satisfying but I've just never gotten around to it um but this I just I think it's fun and the shimmers are really beautiful whenever I do use it something that I honestly could probably get rid of but I just haven't yet oops is my Alme Own It quad um this does have a pretty big deep dip in that um matte shade and then I've worn away most of the raised part of these three shimmer shades. I used this a ton my senior year of high school. I don't know why. I was just really into this. And then I moved on to something else. Also, I just realized I lied that the Flower Beauty palette is not the only drugstore eyeshadow in my collection. This is also a drugstore, but this is... So, I honestly forget I own it sometimes, but this would also be interesting to try and pan or put in a to-go bag or something like that and just see how much I really get to use it now that I'm in a now that I'm four years later in my life. Something I haven't used a lot because it is quite new to me is this Sophia and Mabel the Cleopatra palette. It's a little quad. My stepmom gave it to me. It's got three shimmers and a matte. This is not a palette where I feel like I can use just it and be fine. The MAC palettes, I the MAC Patrick Star quads full look, one, four shadows. Um, the Natasha Nona full look, five shadows. This I don't feel that way about, and I think that's why I haven't used it as much. But, you know, I want to play around with it a little more. I want to do a palette spotlight on it. I want to dig into it and really form an opinion about it before I just, like, toss it or something or give it away. And then my last palette is one that I tried for the first time very recently and kind of loved. It is my Shayna B. Miami Press Pigment Duo in Vino and Bay Harbor. And if you saw that palette spotlight, you'll see how excited I am about these shadows. I thought that the red was so beautiful, so pigmented, blended easily. And this taupey shade was so pretty. It layered so well. They built up really well. I could start light and then add intensity. And I was so happy with the how that look turned out. So this is definitely going to get investigated more by me. That was the first time I ever used this palette. And when I'm done doing my palette spotlight series, I definitely want to revisit this and focus on it a little bit more. So that is 30 palettes, guys. That is everything that I have for you guys today. I hope that I did a good job of being short and sweet and giving you a condensed version of all of these. I will link all of my shadow project panning series down below. And other than that, I hope you are having an incredible awesome day wherever you are and that I get to see you in a future video. Thanks guys!